hello, and welcome to the Louise Elizabeth Podcast, formerly known as the Happy Lifestyles Podcast. Head over to episode 35 if you would love to learn more about the rebrand. This space is a space for me to talk about anything relating to holistic health living, mind, body, lifestyle, spirit, business, and so much more. In my opinion, health is a whole lifestyle, not just one thing that we work on. I will be getting transparent with you, sharing information that I have learned that has supported me and things that I'm currently learning and working on myself. Living a happy and holistic life has changed my world and I hope to inspire you to do the same or give you the tools and resources that you can take away into your own life. I am a 620 hour registered yoga teacher. I am a registered holistic nutritionist and a professional network marketer in the wellness industry. Thank you for being here. Let's get started with today's episode. Hello, beautiful humans. I am super, well, I'm going to say ladies, because if you read the title of this podcast episode, you're most likely a woman listening to it. So I wanted to talk about tracking your cycle today. And so first I want to talk about why would we even want to trackle or track our cycle, excuse me, trackle. That's a new word. <laughs> I should trademark that. Ooh, we should trackle today. Uh, but I want to chat about why to track your cycle and then hopefully give you a couple tips and tricks that you can kind of leave and get started with if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, I don't even know where to start. So uh, first off, I want to say that my experience with tracking cycle, my tracking my cycle actually came because straight up, I didn't want to be on birth control. I, um, I, I just didn't want to be on hormonal birth control. I, I don't know if I've shared this story, but I'll share it with you. When I was 14 years old, I had 14 or just turned 15, actually. Anyway, I was in high school, and I was on birth control because I had bad acne and was supposed to help with acne, BS. And I had rugby tryouts for Rugby Ontario that summer, so I would actually would have been 15. And so I was trying out for rugby and it was like, it was so rainy that weekend and it was muddy and it was cold, even though it was the middle of summer, like it was actually, it would have been springtime. It was just miserable. And I ended up getting sick and my, my parents, bless them. My mom took me to the the doctor and I got antibiotics and I remember I started taking my antibiotics and it was two weeks into, um, the month we'll say. And I got my period. And, you know, I, I, I haven't taught too much about my, I don't know how much I've shared about my relationship with my parents, but we'll just say at this point, I just wasn't at a point where I wanted to go to my mom and be like, oh my God, it's been two weeks and I have my period. What is this? You know, so I kind of freaked out and I was just like, ah, like, God, <laughs> what do I do? And uh, just intuitively and instinctively, I was like, okay, well, I'm certain it's from the antibiotics because they cancel out Well, I did find out that it was because they cancel out um, your birth control. And I remember thinking, like, this cannot be normal. Like, this is not natural. I, I didn't know much in high school, even though you're a teenager and you think you know everything. I didn't know that much, but I did know enough to be like, okay, wait a minute. Like, this this just seems like I just know that I'm supposed to have my period once a month and now I'm getting it two weeks later. Like, this can't be, this can't be good. So I just stopped both instant, instantly. I went on birth control maybe like a couple months in my 20s and I was like, this is, what am I doing? Because you had to remember to take the pill every day at the same time. I was like, this is so dumb. And, uh, which I'm glad I, I was, <laughs> was never good at taking things on time like that. <laughs> and then I got really sick from the antibiotics because if you don't finish the antibiotics, da 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 as some of us know. And so anyway, I just remember being like, I'm never taking antibiotics again and I'm never taking birth control again. And yeah, so anyway. I share that because when I was in my 20s, I wasn't on birth control. Well, I mean, I'm still not on birth control. I did go on copper IUD for three years and the the non-hormonal one, and that was, I'm going to say, eight years ago now. So I had it taken out about five years ago. But even then, when I had my copper IUD, I still did this. I was tracking my cycle because I wasn't on birth control. And I was still as sexually active. So, you know, I just wanted to be safe and and pay attention and I I wasn't doing the the basal the BMT whatever it's called there for the um, taking your temperature for ovulation and things like that I I, I'm not trying to get pregnant I just yeah I just anyway tracking my cycle so I remember I just got a fluffy in my mouth (laughs) I remember I was 
I would go to the doctor and, you know, like, if you ever go to the doctor as a, a woman, you know, like, they always ask you when was your last cycle or when was the last, when was the last first day of your cycle. And I literally would always pull out my phone and be like, it's on this day. And every doctor I went to, because I didn't, I don't have a family doctor being out west and living in a small sea town, etc. Every single time I go to the doctor, still even when I went to get my IUD out um, the five years ago, and I took it out and I was using an app. And it was a female doctor, doctor too. It was just like, what? What is this? Wow, this is so smart. Like, more women should do this. And I'm like, more women don't do this? <laughs> so, I mean, like, the, for the fact that the doctor was just, like, surprised as well, I was just like, how are you not recommending this to women? So, anyway, that's a whole other topic for a different day. But the whole point of sharing it is that's how I started. It wasn't really, like, anything, you know, I, I didn't know anything about anything really at that point. I didn't know not much about cycles or I wasn't interested in my um, – holistic studies or any of that it was really just because I was on birth control and you know I'm not gonna make a mental note of every time my my last period was and then if it had been a little bit longer then I could pay attention or be worried whatever it is right so um that's why I started to to just know when I was getting my period and again it had nothing to do with health it was just to know and track if I should be worried about pregnancy basically so um that I, I, you know, that is one reason why to track your cycle, but the reasons that I believe are, are a little different from that now. <laughs> so uh, there's a few reasons. So first I'll say is if you're someone who has like an estrogen dominant condition, like PCOS, endometriosis, things like that, where you don't generally have a regular cycle, or if you're pre-menopause, perimenopause, getting closer to menopause, a good idea as well. So you can start to see because you officially are in menopause when it's been 12 months and you have not had your period, right? So those are really great reasons to track your cycle. And I know PCOS endometriosis is, um, you know, your, your, your cycle isn't regular, generally speaking, as a general rule of thumb. Um, so it's really useful to pay attention. And, like, things like even, like, PM, PMD, PMMD, PMDD. Why can't I remember any of the acronyms? But, um, like, things like that, you, you still want to pay attention because – you also want to see patterns, right? So if you have endometriosis, for example, even PCOS can be the same, but especially endometriosis, generally speaking, ovulation also tends to be quite painful. And so you might not be extremely regular with your cycle, but you there might still be an element of being able to guess when ovulation will be there. Um, because again, it might be, you're not extremely regular, but you're still between, you know, 25 and 35 days, for example, something like that. And so you can see like the patterns of when ovulation might be. So you can actually set yourself up for success and be like, okay, most likely this is going to be a week where I'm in a lot of pain. Um, so PMDD, you know, the, the week before um, your period, some will call it hell week, right? And if you're tracking your cycle and you know when your period's coming and you know when hell week is for you, you can, you can set yourself up for success that week and tell the people in your life, this is not a good week for me to hang out. This is not a good week for X, Y, and Z, right? So you can actually set yourself up for success. Now, that being said, if you have those imbalances and or if you're coming off birth control, for example, you want to be paying attention because you can find some sort of balance with P PCOS, endometriosis, things like that. Um, if you're suspicious of fib fibroids or cysts and things like that, it's also useful to pay attention because different times of the month, the, the symptoms will amp up. So that's where tracking your cycle is really useful, knowing when your period is coming, obviously. Uh, if you're someone who has extreme PMS even, which is also an estrogen dominant condition, but you have extreme PMS and you're relatively regular, you can be like, okay, like this, these are going to be really bad cramp days for me, most likely. Um, and you can set yourself up by saying no. Um, if you're a yoga teacher, you can get your yoga class covered beforehand instead of being the morning of and scrambling to find someone to cover you, you know? So um, that is something that you can do. And that's where tracking your cycle comes in really handy. So for women that you are having a lot of symptoms and I really hand on heart, my, my heart goes out to you, love to you. Uh, but if you're, you're going through those things, like you can set yourself up by knowing when you're most likely going to feel your worst or you're most tired or your most emotional or most pain. And you can say, no, you can set boundaries and excuse me, really amp up the, the self care routine in, in those moments. So for those, <laughs> for those of us that are, don't want to be on birth control and tracking your cycle is really useful and also tracking your symptoms and your discharge, which I'm not going to get into that now. That's a whole other podcast on its own. Um, but you can track your discharge, put all those things into the apps. Now I will say a lot of these apps 
The one I use is called My Flow, M My, and then F L O. And I really like it because it is all about cycle syncing and it just quickly tells me what phase I'm in, generally speaking. Um, but they're really smart, these apps. And if you constantly are putting in symptoms, and you, like for me, I really just put in day one a lot. I don't have any symptoms. I really don't. And when I'm ovulating, for me, it's very obvious because I get like a little, and when I ovulate as well, I get like a little, it feels like almost someone pokes me with a pin in my uterus. And then I feel the discharge maybe 30 minutes later. I'm like, oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> so for me, it's really obvious. Um, if I was trying to get pregnant, I would probably track those symptoms a little more closely and put them in and, and really be um, on top of that. Um, but not wanting to get pregnant, I still want to know when my ovulation week is. I'm just, I am at this point right now where I am super tuned in and I do know when I'm ovulating. <laughs> I do know when I'm getting close to it, just how I feel, how my body feels, etc. Um, if you're looking to find that kind of relationship with your body, tracking your cycle is really useful because then you can start putting the, the symptoms or not even the symptoms, the signals in, and then you can start to see the patterns showing up. And then these apps are so smart that you put up and put out enough data in there and really probably about three months of data and it really it knows you know it's just it's a machine that runs numbers that's all it does and so it really they're really useful for if you're someone without the with the imbalances if you're someone who's looking to understand when you're fertile if you're someone who's looking to understand when you're fertile for getting pregnant or not getting pregnant you know it and if you're someone who's coming off birth control and trying to find balance in your period, if you're, you're pre-menopause and you're trying to, to really see some um, patterns in your symptoms or know when you're getting closer to no longer being fertile, like there's so many things that these apps can do for you. And if you're not doing it, I highly recommend tracking your cycle. It is such a good idea. And even just for all of those things I mentioned, but also your health, like if you have health things going on, and especially if it's something hormones hormone related there's so much information that you're putting into this app that you can give to your doctor that will be so helpful for your doctor looking for what's going on in your body and I pray I don't actually pray but <laughs> what's a better word I put it out to the universe that nobody has to go through a serious health condition if you do and you're tracking your cycle and the symptoms you might just give that many extra clues to your doctor to help find out what's going on sooner and faster than someone who doesn't. So I really recommend it for your health. I really recommend it for your mental health. I really recommend it for finding balance in your life and living in, in cycle. If you're someone you're trying to do um, cyclical living, like actually like following your, your monthly hormones and what they're doing and, and being creative or exercising and eating based on those things, the apps help. They help so much. There's so many things that go with it. So what I would say is um, if you, if I haven't sold you on tracking your cycle already, I don't know what will. <laughs> but really do it for your health and, and, and you're not going to regret it. It doesn't take much time out of your day. And start small if you're like, Louise, I don't want another freaking app <laughs> to track with. Like, come on. <laughs> That's okay. I get it. You don't need another app to track with. Just start small, get this app, and when you have your period, go in and just put day one and start there. And when that, you don't have to think twice about it. You'll put, have to put in day one in your last day if you bleed for a relatively regular amount of days. And, you know, you, you just have to do that once or twice. And not even once or twice, you do that at the beginning when it asks you all your information. And if you don't know yet, you just go in and update it. And it literally, it takes like five seconds. It really takes five seconds. The longest part is downloading the app and putting all your name in at the start, <laughs> all your information in at the start. And then after that, you just open the app, you press the plus, you click what you're trying to plus and done. It's so easy. So track your cycle, ladies. It's such a good idea. The, the like, oh, I could go on tangents of how being a woman is a superpower in of itself. And the reason it's a superpower is because we can pay attention to our cycle color, our cycle length, our PMS, and without even having to go get blood work or tests at the doctor, you can probably guess what's going on with your hormones. And if something seriously is up, your hormones are going to let you know, and you have that superpower over men. And I think it is freaking awesome. <laughs> okay, so... Hopefully the why has all figured it out. And how to track your cycle? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So I will say the first is using an app. It's quick. It's easy. You just put it in the phone and you're just done. 
Another way you can track your cycle is your discharge. So looking at your discharge, look at the color, the consistency, touch it. Um, and I know touch it sounds really weird, but touch the, the consistency so you can feel it. Notice your moods, um, how you're feeling, symptoms, energy level, things like that you can log as well. And um, also just notice how you're feeling created, creative, creativity, creative wise, creative wise. <laughs> I don't know. I just recorded a masterclass, so that's a lot of talking for me in one one go. But um, yeah, just noticing how you're feeling overall, cravings, stuff like that. Like tracking your cycle doesn't need to be this crazy long elaborate thing, but you definitely want to pay attention and really start um, logging that information because then you get to learn more about your body. Then you get to find a balance and like I said, it's just so beautiful when you can find that, that love and that balance of your period and, um, appreciating it for the superpower that it is versus just like dreading and hating every second of it. I know, like, I know there's someone who's listening to me that's like, Louise, you don't get it. I freaking get it. I used to have PMS so bad that I always had to call in sick or miss the first day of my period at school. Like, throwing up from pain, the worst acne you can imagine, like crying, sitting on the toilet, not sure straight up, sorry if this is TMI, not sure to, sure if I'm going to puke or like come out the other end. Like it just like, I get it. It was so bad and it took time for me to work through those things and find the balance. Um, arguably my PMS was the start of my whole journey of, of being interested in food and stuff because one of the first things I ever Googled was how to manage PMS without painkillers and the reason being is just like my mom had a complicated relationship with painkillers when I was in high school and um, I saw what it did to her and I just absolutely just I like I really I will only take Tylenol if I'm basically like in tears like I had a <laughs> I had a I had um, a, a root canal, so I had my teeth are like kind of squished in my mouth. My I've, like my teeth are too big for my jaw. And so I had these two teeth that were pushing together and I got a cavity. I didn't know how to cavity because of the way my teeth are. And that turned into an infection and my, my face just like swelled up. But even before that, like it was pretty sore before I woke up one day and was just like, oh my God, look at the size of my face and had to emergency go to the dentist. Um, I was just giving a couple days and like, I'll go to the doctor in a couple days. And then, um, anyway, so, or sorry, dentist, not doctor. I still wasn't taking Tylenol. Point of the story, I was in so much pain. Oh, I still wasn't taking like just painkillers over the, the counter. And then I got painkillers for the, from the dentist. He's like, you need to take these. And I still was like, I took one the first day and felt pretty loopy. And I was like, okay, that, that was enough. And I've had this bottle of painkillers. I still have them. They're actually in my first aid kit just in case, um, you know, we're out in the back country and, and something happens and, you know, fingers crossed, you know, no crazy accident or emergency but having that would be useful you know if someone breaks something or um you're trying to hike out and you've torn something whatever it is so yeah anyway um so that's where it started I I was there and then so if you're listening to this and you're like I you don't get it I do I do get it I feel you to my core um and how just like how it feels to just be like oh my period's coming this week and, and not even knowing what day it's coming so you can't even like really set yourself up but just knowing it's coming soon and you're dreading every single second leading up to it every single second of the first x amount of days and for me I was really lucky it was just like the those first three days especially the first 24 hours well those first 72 hours were pretty bad um and then it did kind of ease up as time went on but um yeah okay that's it for me today I um believe last week I talked about it I haven't talked about it too much I have this beautiful course called the women's fundamental um the Fundamental Women's Hormones course, blah, 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 words. It is nine modules long, and um, I'm really, really, really proud of this course, actually. <laughs> 13 years of my own experience and journey through PMS, um, but then also just, like, learning about human bodies. And it's more than just women's hormones, uh, but there's nine modules. The first one's, um, you know, welcoming everybody. The second one's your infradian rhythm, so the 28-day cycle. I do go through the four phases. I do talk more about tracking your cycle, how to track it, um, why live in that cycle, feminine versus men, uh, masculine. I have a whole module on stress in your female body, uh, estrogen dominance. So like last week's, the stress in your female body is last week's podcast episode, but in much more detail, <laughs> uh, estrogen dominance, 
So I go through estrogen dominance, the causes, effects, etc. Nourish the basics. So I break down food and why we want to eat. Nourish and eating to support your system. So I get a little more specific here. There's some conditions that are quite common with a lot of women. So I go through some of those conditions. Um, your fifth vital sign. So I talk about your period. Your period's your a vital sign of yours. Why it's a vital, vital sign. How we can pay attention. More on kind of tracking your cycle there. Uh, women's life cycle. So ovulation. So talking about uh, fertility. Pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause, menopause, and then creating the habits. So what to do to kind of help set you up for success from there. So if you would love to join, I'll put the link in the bio of this episode. You can go and at least check out the program and there's always the opportunity at the time of recording this, only two spots to work one-on-one with me for a three or four month container where we can really dive in and um, yeah, work on uh, work on your health from all perspective. I'm calling it, uh, the wellness restore and I'm calling it the restore because I believe at our core, we all have that, that knowledge and knowing inside of us what we need to do. Sometimes it's just a matter of having someone there to kind of hold our hands and remind us and kind of re empower us to step back into that, that knowledge. Okay. Thanks for listening. If you could take a moment of your time, I always forget what the end recording bit of this is. If you leave me a review, share, tag me on your stories, send me a hello, let me know what your takeaways are. I love hearing them and have a beautiful day. Bye. Thank you for listening, tuning in. I hope you gained some sort of value. Please, if you could take a couple minutes of your precious time to either leave a review or share on your socials, tag I am Louise Elizabeth and help me spread the word of holistic health living to the entire world. (laughs) Maybe that's a big dream, maybe not, but thanks again and have a beautiful day wherever you are in this beautiful and incredible world of ours.